Hi folks, Andy Fion here. In the last Rambles with Robin and Ruby video, we crossed Ontario following the Trans-Canada Highway through the Canadian Shield. We explored the description that the Canadian Shield consists as rocks, lakes and trees. In this video, we leave the Canadian Shield on our journey west to Yukon and arrive on the flat land we call the Canadian Prairies. We leave from Arran Provincial Park in Ontario and end up in Birds Hill Provincial Park, Manitoba. Now, you might be wondering what an ocean has to do with the transition from the Canadian Shield onto the prairies. Well, the transition from the lumpy, rugged Canadian Shield onto the prairies has a lot to do with the geological history of Canada. That history includes an ancient ocean that left behind types of rock that helped create the flat landscape of the Canadian prairies. Now in reality, the Canadian prairies are not exactly flat, but they are a lot flatter compared to the Canadian Shield. So join me as we look at the influence of bedrock geology on the landscape of the transition between the rugged Canadian Shield, Ontario, and the flat land of the Canadian prairies. Let's start with a brief review of the physiographic regions of Canada. This image provides a simple illustration of the physiographic regions of Canada. In this video, we are concerned only with the transition off the Canadian Shield onto the interior plains of Canada. The red line shows the path we followed when we left Ontario and entered the province of Manitoba. The Canadian Shield is Canada's largest and oldest physiographic region. It covers almost 50% of Canada. The Canadian Shield was created when ancient volcanoes were active and collisions took place between ancient pieces of ocean islands and continental crust. All of that activity created mountains and much of that rock is called igneous rock. Now, we certainly don't see tall mountains on the Canadian Shield today. And that is because all of this happened between 4 billion and 1 billion years ago, more or less. That's a long time ago and after a very long history of weathering and several ice ages, when glaciers ground the rocks into dust, the Canadian Shield has been reduced to a rugged, rolling landscape. Much of the Canadian Shield is now covered by boreal forest. Conversely, the interior plains underlie the Canadian prairies. This physiographic region, which lies west of the Canadian Shield, occupies a little less than 20% of Canada by area. In relatively recent geological history, say within several hundred million years, an ancient ocean formed along the west side of the Canadian Shield. That ocean is called the Western Interior Seaway. The ocean ran from the Gulf of Mexico northward through the United States and Canada to the Arctic Ocean. It split North America into two land masses. To the west lay Laramidia, which would later develop into the Rocky Mountains, and to the east lay Appalachia. The ancient ocean existed from about 100 million years ago to about 65 million years ago. Sedimentary rocks accumulated on the bottom and along the edge of that ocean, and those sedimentary rocks make up the interior plains. The southern part of the interior plains is characterized by grassland vegetation. Further north is mixed wood forest and then coniferous boreal forest. The northern part of the interior plains is dominated by treeless tundra. It is those softer sedimentary rocks that give the interior plains its flat landscape. With this understanding of the Canadian Shield and the interior plains, what does that transition actually look like? Well, the transition is subtle. I looked for clues along the roadside of Manitoba Highway number 44. Specifically, I looked for rock exposed along the roadside. In Ontario, farther into the Canadian Shield, I saw many outcrops that consisted of granite or other Canadian Shield rock. Those outcrops are really big. Frequently, they had to be drilled and blasted, leaving dramatic road cuts. Conversely, in Manitoba, close to the transition, those Canadian Shield outcrops were still visible but they were low in profile, and you needed a sharp eye to catch them as you passed by. Eventually, almost suddenly, you stopped seeing any Canadian Shield rock exposed along the roadside. The landscape remained flat, 
the trees became dominated by trembling aspen and farmland became common. That is when we were sure that we had actually crossed the transition from the rugged Canadian shield onto the interior plains. Not long after we reached the interior plains of Manitoba, we arrived at our destination for the night, Birds Hill Provincial Park. This was our first time in this provincial park. The park is underlain by several different habitats, which makes for an interesting tour along the many hiking trails. The park has a reputation for being very crowded during the summer, but because we passed through on a weekday in late May, we had no difficulty finding a campsite that met our needs. The campsite even included a serenade by one of the many Franklin's ground squirrels with whom we shared the campsite. Well, as we close this video, I leave you with a few images of Birds Hill Provincial Park in Manitoba to enjoy. Thanks for visiting and watching. Cheers, until next time.